We have just been royally f***ed over by ourselves. This is everything to us. And when something like this happens and uh, people are busy talking at you and busy saying, you know, what are you doing? Your first reaction isn't to grab the camera, it's to go, what am I doing? <sighs> this is not what we signed up for. <laughs> So I want to first and foremost say that we screwed ourselves over <laughs> but we were also screwed over by the person that we bought it from. We were screwed over like it. <sighs> we found out that he got the boat for nothing, it was supposed to be condemned, made it look all pretty and covered up a lot and then sold it to and us. Sold it to a bunch of naive kids. Yep. We trusted someone and we trusted their judgment because we didn't know any better, but we should have known better. We should have, we should have gotten more information. We shouldn't have let emotion take, take over. And they should have just asked around the harbor. If we had just asked around the harbor, we wouldn't be in this mess. They would have told us to run. I've got so many videos of me sitting in the boat saying, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't know what to do. And as you can imagine, it's really overwhelming. Um, just walking around the boat, I don't know where to start. I, I honestly, I don't know where to start. I didn't say, have we made the wrong choice? Because I didn't even want to say it, you know? It was how we were both feeling and just not saying. Mm -hmm. And then once someone said to us, you know, Something's not right. Something's not right. You need to really go and evaluate. In the beginning, what we were kind of like, nah, nah it's, it's fine. fine. <laughs> and then we spent a lot of time on his boat and talking yeah. to the other people. And, and we did. We spent a lot of time helping him with his boat and yeah. realizing the amount of work that goes into the smallest thing. Um, so that was quite a shock. It eventually got to the point where we did so many calculations. We figured out it was going to be so expensive to fix it up. Luckily, we were able to sell it pretty quickly after we made the choice to sell it. I think it was about two months. The whole time through, we were just we were told as long as we keep the dream. To us, well, to me especially, it wasn't a wrong step. It just happened. I I and don't look at it, it like it was a lesson. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I think we both feel like it was yeah, a been... huge lesson. So the first thing that we decided to do was get a smaller boat. That was like number one, get a smaller boat because we've never sailed before, um, as a lot of you know, and probably think that we're crazy. It's not so much that, it's more how much it actually costs. Yeah. It's if, if like you compare, the bigger the boat, the more expensive the maintenance yeah. is. If you compare a 38 foot to a 28 foot, yeah. the work, the money, you have to get less paint. The rigging costs less because there's less. Yeah. It's right. just everything is less. Everything costs less when it's a smaller boat. The bigger, and it you takes know. less time. Uh, yeah, and it also takes less time to fix up. And then number two is learning on someone else's boat. <laughs> We're going to be learning on this boat here. This is Monrev. We're going to be doing a tour of her with the owner. His name is Gordon. And we're off to go and clean the deck. And yeah, she is an absolutely beautiful boat. She's custom built. Yeah. I still need to learn all of my knots. She's really, really beautiful and it's almost bad because it set our expectations too high. She's a 40 foot boat. We think she's a custom, I need to check that. She is about seven tons. She's a GRP. We helped work on the boat when it was out of the water on the hard. It's currently in the water now. So we have, um, well, we haven't been posting. We've been doing a lot, so. Yeah, we're starting from scratch basically, with yeah. a lot more knowledge than we started And someone with. to help us. Yeah. Because what, what happens is we'll find a nice boat online, we bring it to Gordon, and 
you'll have a look and you'll just see things we won't see. I look back at the reason that we bought Hamel and I want to cry because I'm like, you were a moron. Because one of the biggest reasons why I fell in love with Hamel was the fact that she had a shower. We didn't even know where the water tanks were. All I cared about, I was like, it has a shower. I want it. I, it has a shower and it's 38 feet. And you know, it's like kind of pretty. That's it. And I look back and I'm like, Yeah, it's not kind of why? pretty, it could look pretty. It could look pretty. <laughs> I'm like, why did you do this? If you're gonna get a boat in a marina and you found the boat, you're unsure, you want some more information about it, um, because a lot of the time, also if you're doing it through a broker or something like that, they don't have all the information because you're not able to talk to the owner. Talk to the people in the harbour. They'll know about the boat. They'll know how long it's been sitting there. They'll know talk things. Talk to the harbour master. Yeah, they'll know things that the broker might not tell you or might, might not, even, not know. even know. I mean, we're not experts on it, but... It was a huge learning curve and I wouldn't take it back. Cheapest, cheapest school fees ever. Hi everyone, thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more behind the scenes things, check out me and Cam's Instagrams. The links are down below. And can we all just take a moment to appreciate just how hard I try not to interrupt Cam while we're filming, but I just can't seem to get the hang of it. But anyway, thanks for watching.